Iran seized an oil tanker that was heading to America. Take me through what happened, Lauren. It was a Chevron uh, commission tanker. It was carrying Kuwaiti oil from Kuwait to Houston, Texas, but was seized by Iran in the Gulf of Oman. This is just the latest incident showing Iran threatening both international shipping lanes but also energy supply. Okay. Following on from that, listen to this. A bipartisan group of lawmakers demands President Biden seize Iranian oil and gas shipments. Senator Journey Ernst is leading that group, and she joins me here in New York City. Yeah. All right, Senator, welcome to the show. Thank welcome you. to New York. Yes, thank you. Do you want the U.S. Navy to get out there in the Gulf and seize Iranian ships? Well, we do have an obligation to seize Iranian oil and natural gas. Um, we do have to do this. This is something that uh, was really uh, drilled down into during the Trump administration. But what we see so far is Biden refusing to follow the oil sanctions that we have against Iran. Now, under the Trump administration, 75 percent of the revenues that were generated from oil seizures from Iran were to go to the victims yep. of terrorism from state-sponsored terrorism. Biden hasn't followed that at all, so we see that victims fund uh, getting lower and lower when it comes to uh, providing support for those it, victims of terrorism. It would be pr it, an international incident, highly provocative, but if we the have, U.S. Navy grabbed an Iranian but ship. But we have those oil sanctions yeah. on Iran. That has been the directive. President Biden has not followed that. We see victims of terrorism suffering because of this. And we see Iran continuing to get wealthier and wealthier off of their oil sales. Um, so we need to make sure that we're doing everything we can to follow the sanctions that are put into place and make sure we're degrading the capabilities of Iran. I'm going to change the subject, as I often do in the middle of an interview, and listen to this one. A transgender female beat about 14,000 women in the London Marathon. Now she's offering to give the medal back. Senator, you're working to protect women in sports. What do you make of this trans athlete handing the winning medal back? Well, I think it's the appropriate thing to do. <laughs> we have biological males that are competing against females, biological females. And so I am a co-sponsor of legislation that is the Protecting Women and Girls in Sports Act, which was rejected by Democrats earlier this week. It was passed by the House last week. But we know that there are physiological differences between those that are born as men and women. And Title IX gave women the opportunity to to get out there, compete yeah. in sports, compete for yeah. scholarships and awards, and now we see biological males taking those opportunities away. The, the measure that the Democrats rejected, would it have stopped, um, let, let me get this right, uh, young men who are transitioning into young women, would it have stopped those people from competing against women in sports? Would that, that, that's what you want to do. Yes, and what the law does then is if any of those groups, whether it's a college or a school that's receiving federal funds and they allow biological males to compete against biological females in female athletics, uh, they would then be in violation of the law. But unfortunately, it's not now going to be the law of the land because of our Democrats. Keep fighting. Okay. Thank you. I understand. <laughs> it's on the prompter. <laughs> yeah. Your annual roast and ride is coming. You're going to be riding a motorcycle. I am. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is it a Harley or a Kawasaki? It is a Harley Davidson <laughs> Softail Deluxe. I, oh, <laughs> I, I do you. this every year. Roastandride.com. Please go out there. Uh, the benefit of the motorcycle ride, uh, yes, that is me. The benefit of the motorcycle ride this year will be the Cedar Rapids Freedom Foundation, with, which assists our Iowa veterans. So, again, roast and ride.com. We'd love to have folks, even if you can't attend on June 3rd, we certainly would love to see the support for that foundation. Iowa's flyover country, but it's very important. <laughs> very important. We have the 2024 caucuses coming up. We've invited all of our presidential hopefuls. We have a number that have responded already. It is going to be a blast, folks. So come on into Des Moines, Iowa, June 3rd. The, the, the Democrats dropped Iowa as the first primary state and oh. went to South Carolina, didn't they? Yes, the Democrats gave the middle finger to middle America. <laughs> oh, this so. is a family show. <laughs> Senator, a family show. I love that. <laughs> Senator Joni Ernst from Iowa, a wonderful state. Thanks very much. For Thank you very much. Much obliged. Thank you.